Cowboys pregame live is brought to you by AT&T and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. It is a perfect day for football at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. Sunny and a crisp 37 degrees as football weather is here. And so as week 15 of the Dallas Cowboys season, they take on the New York Giants in an e NFC bout. And welcome in to Cowboys pregame live. Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback. We've got Nate Newton, Britt Johnson, and Nick Eatman coming up here in the next coming minutes. It's the Cowboys, it's the Giants, it's a rivalry that goes all the way back to 1960 and a rivalry again that really provides the Cowboys for a great opportunity to get back on track as they try and heat things up in the cold of New Jersey. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, this is a huge game for the Dallas Cowboys with the playoffs possibly around the corner. You're going against a team that you've owned as of late. And look, I know this Cowboys offense has struggled, but if there's any team to get your confidence up against, it's the New York Giants. So I expect a big day from Dak Prescott and this Cowboys offense. These boys have to show up and they have the ball out. This NFC East showdown is going to be real. These Giants want to try to take you off the throne and you're trying to execute get yourself in a better position as you approach the playoffs don't let this be a game that you let slip underneath you you got to take care of business got to take care of business the Cowboys have done that the last two weeks both on the road they're looking for their third straight win all three of which would be away from AT&T Stadium a win would go a long way in locking up the NFC East division for the Cowboys as we take a look at some of the standings at the moment the Cowboys set up on top by three games they have a three game lead with four to play three of those last four are against your division. It's the Giants this week, Washington next week, then you play the NFC e, or the NFC leading Arizona Cardinals before rounding out your season with the Philadelphia Eagles. They would need some things to go right in terms of Washington and Philadelphia. They play on Tuesday due to COVID delays, but they would need the tie and Dallas would have to win in order to actually clinch the division, but Really, this is the division that is Dallas is to lose at the yeah, moment. Without a doubt. I mean, they got a three-game lead right now. Um, to me, this is, this is like you said, Kyle, this is the division for the Cowboys to win. I mean, they go out here, get the victory here, and like we said, we'll wait till Tuesday to find out if it's official or not. But to me, I see the Cowboys running away with this division easily, and it starts today. They should be, C, but as we just mentioned, if these boys don't show up, we will have another occurrence of what happened with against the Denver Broncos. Mm. We don't need that again today. So these guys need to go out here and secure this division. Don't allow Allowed us to be a quote unquote trap game for them. Bring your talent, bring some assignments, and bring your execution and get the W. Cowboys are going to be without a couple of their more talented guys on the defensive side of the football as Osa Odigizua and Tristan Hill were placed on the COVID 19 reserve list earlier in the week as both of those guys are not available today. There was some concern around maybe having a couple other defensive linemen out, but at the moment, those are the only two that will not be playing. But I want to ask this question with the Giants. You mentioned taking care of business. Is this an opportunity for a trap game? You mentioned it's NFC East. It's the rivalry. Everything that can happen and everything's on the table, right? Yeah, anytime you have a bright future ahead of you and you have an opponent that you that you have taken care of easily um, in the past, it can easily be a trap game if you don't bring the right approach to the game. That's something that Dallas has already taken had this year with Denver. They need to make sure it doesn't happen again today. Yeah, it could be a trap game, but to me, I don't think it is. I don't think it's going to be a trap game because I don't believe in the quarterback. I don't believe that Mike Glennon can consistently move the football against this revamped Dallas defense. And at the end of the day, I see the Cowboys running away with this one. Is this the best opportunity for the Cowboys offensively who have struggled over the last six games to try and ramp up for that final month? Of Without the a doubt. You know, I said it earlier. <laughs> this, is the, this is the team that you want to build your confidence up against. So Dak Prescott can go out there, get that connection with his receivers once again, get that continuity on the offensive line. I expect a big day from this offense. Isaiah? Yeah, I mean, these uh, just what Barry said. I mean, these guys just need to go out there, execute. This is a game to get back on track. Mm -hmm. Offensively, we haven't been off track. So go out there, take care of business, get your confidence back, and let's go ahead and take care of these boys, knock them out with a clean sweep. The Giants are 25th in the NFL against the run. They gave up 201 rushing yards against the Cowboys in their first meeting going back to week five. When we come back, we take a look at the offensive line and see if there are any changes up front for the Cowboys. Uh, I, I thought we moved the ball well, and I thought we we did we did we did good on offense. I think I think um, our expectations are are real high, um, 
and we kicked a lot of field goals. That was it. You know, we understand that coaches preach to us all the time that field goals won't necessarily win in this league. Um, we our defense did a phenomenal job, um, but you know there are offense offenses that we're going to play who who going to put it in the end zone. Or hopefully not. Hopefully our defense can, can stop them. But that's what we're preparing for as an offense. And you know when you look at it like that, we need to score touchdowns too. You know, instead of settle, instead of settle for field goals, so that's the biggest issue. Your experience. You just stick to the game plan. You know, Kellen usually does a, a great job in the first 15 plays. Uh, we stick to that game plan. We'll be fine. What, what can it take to, I guess, kind of get out of that funk? Can it, can it happen in one big play between you and Dax, or Dax and CD or Michael, or is it kind of a more fluid thing in your experience? Um, it's a combination of things uh, to me. You know, obviously we gotta uh, gotta execute better. You know, it's just when your name is called, whatever route is called, whatever play is called, when we're in that that red zone. You gotta go up and you gotta go make that play. Yeah, I think it's just as simple as that. Like if they, you know, my name is called, I'm the first read on the play. I have to go win, so that can feel comfortable, can feel comfortable throwing me the ball, and I can score. And that's, that goes for everybody else. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have taken down the Giants in eight of their last nine meetings. Nine of ten would put the Cowboys on the cusp of clinching an NFC East title either later this week or even next week as we enter the latter part in the final month of the NFL calendar. Back here on Cowboys pregame live, let's take some time and go out to MetLife Stadium where we are joined by Nick Eatman live on the sidelines. Nick, thanks again for joining us and everybody's asking the question, who is starting at the left guard spot? Do you have any insight for us and what's going around MetLife? Well, I'll tell you what's going around first is that Kyle, you and I have different opinions of what perfect is because you said perfect football weather. And I can tell you just from the people on this side of the field, I don't know how perfect it is. Very cold. Uh, but yet on, on the field, though, you got guys in the studio, though, that have played. They probably love it. But I, I know this. A lot of bundled up people over here. Now, left guard, it's going to be Connor Williams. They're moving back there. They tried with Connor McGovern. They, they went four games. They wanted to give him a good sample size there didn't really change anything. In fact, the Cowboys running game got worse, not putting it all on him. A lot of factors going involved there. But I think that they're feeling like Connor Williams can get back in this mix, needs to clean up those holding penalties, and then they could maybe run the ball a little bit better. I believe it was on Hanging with the Boys, one of the shows this week, one of the podcasts, it was Joe Looney that said, nastiest player that he's played with, but by far, Connor Williams. He can really get in there, be a fist fight type of guy. They, they need that. They need a guy that can bully people around. So let's see if, if he can get in there and help. Connor Williams is going to be the guy at left guard. There's word, or at least there's rumor that there could be some rotation there as well. No Tyron Smith this week. He's out after an injury sustained in last week's game against the Washington football team. What kind of rotation could we see on the tackle spots today? I do believe Terrence Steele is going to start at left tackle, but Ty Inseki has got a lot of reps this week as well. He's going to get some some work, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, that Steele will go off the field when that happens. You know, we saw last week Steele moved over into a jumbo package next to Lyle Collins or just as an extra tight end, blocking tight end type of guy. So you'll see Steele, you'll see Ty Inseki, you'll see Lyle Collins on that right side. If you can stay in the game for four quarters, they'll see all those guys in there. But but I do believe that they're going to play some different tackles there as well as the new guard. Now, speaking of tackles, let's go to the defensive tackle spot. No Tristan Hill, no Osa Odigizua. Is there a domino effect and what's the rotation going to look like on the defensive line with those two guys out? Well, I can tell you this. Yesterday, there were a lot of fingers crossed about some COVID tests that were going to happen this morning. They were really worried about uh, guys like Carlos Watkins, Neville Gallimore, Quentin Bohanna, Justin Hamilton, those guys. Those are the four that are left. But just anytime you have two from the same position, you could, you know, the close contacts, it could be 
uh, testing positive to this morning, but that did not happen. So they, they are going to have four th those defensive tackles. And then in passing situations, you'll see uh, Chauncey Golson will get in there, Dorrance Armstrong as well. You know, they, they move him inside. Of course, Tank, Micah Parsons will play all over the place. So that they'll be fine in the passing situations, but they do have those four guys there uh, with Justin Hamilton moving up, that the four guys in the defensive tackle when they're going up against the run. Nick Eatman live from the sidelines at MetLife Stadium. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks so much. There he goes, Nick Eatman. And now joining us is Nate Newton for the first time today on Cowboys pregame live. Six-time Pro Bowler, three-time Super Bowl champion. And Nick just talked about the rotations both on the offensive and defensive line. Let's start with the offensive line. Connor Williams going to start at left guard over Connor McGovern. Do you like the move based on what you've seen over the last couple of weeks? Yes, the problem was with, the, with Williams was that he was he had a hand placement problem. He seemed to have gotten that worked out, and they wanted to look and see if McGovern and give him a chance. He, he competed hard during training camp. He got through that, and he competed hard. They wanted to take a look at him. Right now, Connor Williams is your best uh, bet at that left uh, guard. Williams, in his previous nine starts this season, had just ten pressures allowed in the last four games for Connor McGovern. When he started, he allowed 12 pressures. So hopefully the pass protection and maybe even the run game can benefit from having Williams back in the fold. Let's take a look at the rest of the inactive list today for the Dallas Cowboys. Israel Mukwamu, Azur Kamara, Nashawn Wright, a couple of younger players all inactive. There's the big name though. Tyrant Smith not available. He misses his first game in a couple of weeks with an ankle injury. He is not on the IR list. He's on the inactive list. So still a possibility that he could return pretty soon. There is a name that's not on this list, though. Nate Newton, and that is Tony Pollard expected to make his return after dealing with some plantar fasciitis. He has the most yards per carry in the NFL at a moment at 5.6 yards per tote. How big is it and how much does this add to an offense to have a guy like Pollard back in the fold? Oh, he's, he's bringing his own special brand of ball carrier, man. And what I like is he's he's a nightmare for, for his matchups, man. If we can get him on the edge a little bit more, you know, doing his, he has a foot injury and we need to get him on the edge more. You know, a lot of let him pound up in the middle and have to put uh, pressure on that uh, heel. Only missed one game. He suffered that injury on the long 58-yard touchdown run against New Orleans back in week 13. How much do you expect him to see a workload in this game? Do you expect him to maybe be limited to a certain extent? No, we need his 20 plays. We, we need to win this game in high fashion. We need to get our run game in a, in a groove. I like where our run game at. We had last week had 35 carries, 122 yards. If we can just get him five or six of those carries with Zeke another five and six, hey, let's do it. Do you think that having his presence back in the fold could really help a guy like Ezekiel Elliott, Elliott out because of the change of pace that you could provide to an opposing defense? Man, you're a genius, my brother. <laughs> you're a genius. I say I no I more. I best. say no more. That's that's what he's about. He's a change of pace back, and he's valuable to the offense and getting and throwing out of the backfield and just making things hard for the offense to adjust, defense to adjust to. He's also going to add some on special teams as well. He had the big kick return earlier in the season. Had a big game in the 200. 101 rushing yards against the Giants in a 44-20 win back in week five. When we come back, though, here on Cowboys pregame live, Isaiah Stanback hits the film. He's going to give you the keys to fixing this Cowboys offense when we return. This segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Coming as an offense. I mean, I know you guys ran better, but at the end of the game, y'all couldn't close it out. Can, how frustrating was that? And can y'all get back to where you were? Um, I mean, we we ran better last game. We're definitely. Uh, I think I think our confidence level has is it is where it's been. Um, I think we know we got to play better, uh, but I think we we also know um, the level we could play at. We just got to go out there, you know, and. Uh, Play better. <laughs> Some would say that your quarterback is in a slump. What, what do you guys say when you see him? Uh, I mean, it's, it's 11 of us out there, uh, so I can't. I wouldn't say you could put anything on one player because it takes 11 guys to, to make a play, and uh, I think that we all need to play better, the whole offense uh, collectively.
Welcome back in the Cowboys pregame live and this Cowboys offense has seen their fair share of struggles over the last couple of weeks. Well, one touchdown in their last 19 possessions, but this is really a compounding problem over the last month and a half. Here's the last six games for the Dallas Cowboys. Just a couple of touchdowns. That passing yardage is definitely on a drop off. That was up over 300, 320 at different points in the season. And then the rushing yards has also taken a significant hit. That was a team, at least in the Cowboys, that was a top three rushing attack in the NFL. They've dropped back into the lower level of the top. Top 10. The Cowboys still have plenty of time to figure things out. Four games on the docket, three of those against your divisional foes, starting today against the New York Giants. And with more on how the Cowboys can fix the offensive side of the football, here's Britt Johnson and Isaiah Stanback. Thanks so much, Kyle. Now, we got to get right into this one. Britt Johnson here with Isaiah Stanback, who is hopefully going to help us figure out this offense because the last few weeks it has not looked pretty. And we got to end this season. Hi, on a bang, right? Absolutely. So let's get to the stand back plan, shall we? Let me show you guys what the plan is. First thing we need to address with this offense is figuring things out on the offensive line. This left side of our offensive line. Listen up, from the center position to the left tackle, we have a couple glaring holes. Mm -hmm. Tyler Biotta is a great player, he come up and coming young guy, second year in the league, but he still has a lot to learn. To the left of him, we have Connor Williams or Connor McGovern. Not really sure which one it is. <laughs> Neither one of them seemingly wants to step up and take the starting role. That's a glaring hole. And to the left of them, we have Tyron Smith. Ah, not Tyron Smith today because yes. of his injuries. And we, that is obviously something that we're assuring up as well with, Ty, with uh, Terrence Steele swinging over to that left side. What does that do in terms of defenses facing us? Well, defenses feel very confident blitzing against us right now because we are the fourth highest blitz against team in the NFL. That is with not a, good. Not at all. With an average of 12 blitzes per game is something that we have to take care of. We have to secure that offensive line like we used to back in the day when teams were fearing us. Yes. Well, this offensive line is kind of going to lead to our number two here. What you got for us? Uh, number two is we have to get this running game going. Okay, we need an effective running game. What is effective? Okay, yes, the stats show that we're seventh in the league, but guess what? We are only 20th in the league in terms of touchdowns, so we have to figure that out. We need to be able to get our guys Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, the ball, and we need those guys to be 100% healthy in order for us to be able to be effective as we have been in the past. Yes, and those points are not happening in the red zone, especially. I know Amari Cooper spoke about that earlier this week. Number three, what you got for us? Number three, you guys, we need to get Dak swag back, okay? Dak has been swagless over the last four games. Over the last four games, he has four interceptions. Five, I mean, four, sorry, four touchdowns versus five interceptions, okay? He is not playing Dak ball. His QBR rating has been an average of 75 over the last few four weeks. You guys, we need to be able to take care of these first two things by shoring up the offensive line, by getting a run game, and all those things that contribute to this dude right here, balling out. Hopefully the Dallas Cowboys looked and listened to this because this was great. Thank you so much, Isaiah Stanback. Back to you guys. If they are able to do those three things, I think the Cowboys should be looking pretty good against the New York Giants. Final four <laughs> games of the season. What do you guys need to see from this offense to make you feel better going into playoffs? Well, to me, I need to see a little bit more consistency on third down. I mean, the last three games with this Cowboys offense, they're 12 of 44 on third down. That's 27%. And when you're going against good teams or playoff teams, that's just not going to cut it. So in order for me to feel a little bit more confident in what Dak and these guys are doing, I need to see a little bit more consistency on the money down, which is third down. You know, and that consistency you got to have an offensive line that is in place they need to stop swinging these guys around we know that Tyron Smith is out as the left tackle but our left guard need to be Connor Williams our right tackle need to be Lyle Collins and we need to roll with that so we can get some consistency up front to have the success you're talking about maybe that's why these changes are being made today just because there is some time to get some consistency prior to the end of the regular season the Cowboys they were just talking about it in that segment red zone just one of six last Last week against the Washington football team. They're going to need to improve upon that this week. But when we come back here on pregame live is Micah Parsons the defensive player of the year already. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily feel like I am, um, but Obviously, we haven't been playing well. I haven't been playing my best ball. Um, so more importantly, it's just about me getting back to that. Um, and, and as I've told you millions of times, the type of player I am, it's about practice, it's about the repetition um, and preparing. So uh, that's what I'm sticking to. There's a lot of people that will speculate that it's your calf or it's something else. Like, how are you feeling physically? I'm fully healthy, 100% healthy. 
Thank you, though. Thank you. Dad, do, do you hear, like, <laughs> aside from us asking these questions, do you do you hear all the talk about how Dak was before the calf injury versus, you know, and so on and so forth? And does that motivate you in, in any way? Um, I, I think I'd be lying if I said I haven't heard it. Um, but, yeah, in a sense, it does. Um, but, you know, I've been... I've been doubted, doubted my whole life, been said I couldn't do this or I can't do that. So in a sense, um, I, I'm actually glad it's kind of come back. I'm glad uh, that that's the way that the people feel and that there's a lot of that being said right now. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I didn't hear. There are very few rookies in the history of the NFL that are have, uh, have had seasons like Micah Parsons is having for the Dallas Cowboys at the moment. Here are his numbers compared to some of the best in the league. T.J. Watt, Miles Garrett, there's the odds right underneath it. Parsons just a tick behind both of these guys who are perennial defensive player of the year possibilities, favorites even, and Micah Parsons even being in that conversation with statistics that are very similar is impressive in the own right. In your opinion, is he good enough to be in that conversation? Barry? Without a doubt. I say 100%. I mean, he's easily in that conversation, and I would put him in the defensive player of the year right now. I mean, look, this guy, he might not have the sack numbers that a, that a T.J. Watt or a Miles Garrett has, but when you talk about splash plays, when you talk about impactful plays that swing the momentum in favor of the Cowboys week in and week out, this is the guy that's doing it. And right now, I don't see too many defensive players that are playing better than this guy. You know, when I think about this dude, I think about an old song that says, who's that creeping in my window? That's Michael <laughs> Parsons. <all right? laughs> Michael Parsons has been on fire since week eight. Since week eight, week eight, he is leading the league in his rushing grade. He is leading the league in, with nine and a half sacks since week eight. And he's fifth in the league with 33 pressures since week eight. So, yes, those guys might be ahead of him right now. But by the end of this season, I, I expect him to be on top. Well, and he's got a mindset of the same thing of he wants to stay hungry. His saying now is the lion is always hungry. But here is what he had to say in his own words about the matchup this week and staying hungry after a great start. It's, it's definitely, I would definitely say it's, it's a, like real too early. I mean, I could see the similarities, but LT was completely different, man. Like, it's, a, it's an honor that people are doing that, but I mean, to be compared to like a Hall of Famer so early on, I mean, it's just not ready to be in the conversation yet. It's still a long way to go. I mean, he had 142, so I have 130 more sacks to go before we can start saying, yeah, that was LT. So let's just chill and, you know, keep enjoying the work uh, that I got to keep putting in to get there. So you heard there kind of addressing some of the Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor, best defender to ever do it. And some of the comparisons that have been thrown out there, I think it's because of the rookie of the year and defensive player of the year conversation since nobody's done it since LT back in 1981. But are the comparisons fair for Parsons and Taylor at the moment? I think if you're talking about just their rookie seasons, if you're talking about just their rookie seasons in general, I think it's a fair comparison. Because if you look at where Micah Parsons stands right now, his numbers are comparable to what LT did his rookie season. Now, you know, if we talk about years to come, will he measure up to LT? You know, the jury's still out on that one. But if we're talking about just a rookie seasons I got to say it's a fair comparison I'm not a fan of comparing you know all the all-time greats versus rookies um, but he's doing a heck of a job and I think he's impacting the game in so many different ways he's the only player that has 200 or 200 rushes and 200 coverages in terms of dropping back and cover so this dude is a beast mm -hmm. kind of going back to the graphic we saw at the start of the segment I mean Miles Garrett TJ Watt 90 percent of their snaps are going, coming as pass rushers Micah Parsons does a little bit of everything and that's why he's changing the game at the defensive level when we come back here on pregame live we'll tell you how to keep your pregame coverage going as we continue to get you ready for Cowboys and Giants here on DallasCowboys.com. Uh, I think I think we're in a good spot considering, uh, you know, we're at as good as the health that we have been at all year, uh, getting some guys back. Uh, you know, Sunday was a good starting point for, for us as a defense. Uh, and we're really just trying to keep continuing to build, you know, and fix some of the small things uh, that's going on with our defense right now. But overall, I think we're in a good, we're in a good spot right now being it's week 15 and, you know, we, we're able to put a show on like we did last week. 
uh, we don't know if it's a championship defense until we win a championship. So, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, I think we have the players in the locker room to do it. But like I said, uh, you know, when you when you when you step out there uh, week one. Uh, training camp and things like that, everyone says they have a championship defense. So, you know, until you win a championship, you won't know that answer. How do you feel from defense, just how this group has improved overall? Uh, I feel like we're, we're, we're getting better with the uh, gap responsibility, gap integrity, and just, just being where we need to be, uh, you know, whether that's the uh, – you know, secondary, secondary defense, or you know, the front line. Uh, we're, we're we're handling the, the right gaps, handling our responsibility, and not trying to do too much. Cowboys pregame live was brought to you by AT&T, SWBC Mortgage. Join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit swbcmortgage.com to find a pro today. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Wrapping things up here on the television side of Cowboys pregame live. Thanks for joining us here on this Sunday week 15 of the NFL season is here. And if you are not done with your pregame coverage of the Cowboys and the Giants, be sure to join us on DallasCowboys.com because we've got plenty coming up. It, what is the identity of this Cowboys team? Is it actually the defense, a team that's been so offensive heavy over the last couple of years? What about the one on one interview with Neville Gallimore? Britt Johnson sits down with the Cowboys pass rusher and we'll provide a lot of insight on who Neville Gallimore is and a lot of fun as well. But that does it for us here on the TV side. Join us on DallasCowboys.com. It's the Cowboys and the Giants' new kickoff on Fox. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back into pregame life. A quick break, and then now we're back on the internet side of things. Kyle Yeoman's back with you, now joined by Britt Johnson. And Britt, you had an opportunity to catch up with one of the most exciting parts over the last couple weeks, Neville Gallimore, back for the Dallas Cowboys. He is Cowboys. back for the Dallas Cowboys. I know y'all saw that big sack he had last week. I actually sat down with him and spoke about how did he stay motivated and just ready to get right back in the game? Well, he said it was his teammates and some other things on this episode of First and Ten. Well, we got to get right into this because the people have missed you. OK, so we, we got to we got to talk about some things. So you were activated off of IR last week. So this was actually technically your first NFL game with full fans in the stands. No yes. COVID capacity restrictions. How did it feel? Man, it felt amazing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It feels like I haven't played football in so long. Mm -hmm. I was just happy to be back on the field. I mean, seeing how our defense is going crazy, I was just happy to be back in the mix, for real. So, um, the defense has been super explosive. They were amazing last week. They've been amazing kind of all season, getting better and better each week. Uh, I kind of feel like you guys have been drinking, like, the Michael's Secret stuff from Space Jam. But, like, what do you think is really the biggest difference between last season to this season? Um, I mean, guys just understand that, you know, guys are hungry. You know, we, we try to make a statement. At the end of the day, we understand there's a lot of people that always have a lot of doubt. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's just what it's about, being a part of Dallas Cowboys. You know, we always got that that kind of that stuff on our head that everybody wants to be better than us. So we try to make a statement this year. That's all it is. And you guys have done that for sure. You actually got your first game back. You got your first sack back, really. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. congratulations on that, first of all. Um, 
I gotta know, during your rehab, having that you've had and stuff, what kind of kept you going, kept you motivated? So when you came in this game last week, you just, it looked like you didn't miss a step. I know you said you felt like you haven't played football in a long time, but it didn't look like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, I can be quick to say, you know, my family, obviously, support from my friends, but really, ultimately, you know, the guys in that room, man, there's just something about it, even when I was hurt, just getting up and being a part of that D-line room, and those guys still making me feel a part of the family, even though I was hurt, and I really appreciated that, because, you know, kind of guy I tend to overthink at times, and, you know, just seeing those guys still have my back, even though I'm not out there, I felt like it was only right, like, I had to, I had to be there for the guys, and, and it, it really helped the process, you know. So I really, I gotta give most of my credit to them. As always, you can catch the entire interview with Neville Gallimore on DallasCowboys.com. We welcome you back in to pregame live. Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. And guys, is the identity of this defense as the Cowboys prepare to take on the Giants at MetLife Stadium. Is it the identity of the team now? Is this defense, is strong defense, plenty of takeaways, is that what the Cowboys mantra is at the moment? I would have to say so. You know, earlier in the season, it was more of a bend but don't break style defense. Right now, they're flying on all cylinders, whether it's this defensive line pinning their ears back and getting after the quarterback or these guys in the back end taking the football away. These guys have become the strength of this team, and hopefully it continues as this season progresses. That would be a resounding yes, Kyle. <laughs> uh, um, yes, I believe so. I think these guys, that with the cultural difference that, the, uh, that Dan Quinn has came in and, and, and made on this side of the ball, um, it's really starting to carry out throughout the rest of this team. And I can't imagine a game where our defense isn't playing with this high energy um, and this high intensity and us actually being successful. I agree with you fellas, man. It, it, they, they've knocked the door in. I mean, they've, they've, they've stepped in there and they've done what they had to do. Thanks to Coach Quinn, thanks to the young rookie, thanks to uh, Demarcus Lawrence coming back healthy. All these pieces fitting together with Gregory on top. Yeah, they doing their thing. All these guys coming back last week provided a jolt to that defense. Gallimore had a sack. Gregory had a sack. D-Law had a sack. Parsons had a sack. And, <laughs> oh, not to mention they had four takeaways against the Washington football team. Second game in a row, they've had four takeaways. They did it against the Saints in week 13 as well. But here in week 15, they've got a depleted Giants team on the other side. Not only on the offensive side, but even as of this morning, four positive COVID-19 tests for the Giants secondary. So the offense should have some opportunity there, but we'll stick with the defense. Saquon Barkley against the Dallas Cowboys has not had a ton of success. How about 58.8 rushing yards per game? He has not beaten the Cowboys as the starter. He is 0 of 5 as a tailback for the Giants. He really has not had any success against the Cowboys. How do they keep that going on the defensive side, Barry? Uh, do we have number 11? You do have Do we 11. have number 90? Yep. Do we, <laughs> have nine, do we have number 94 as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Greg. Oh, uh, we got those three people. That's all we need, all right? They're going to take care of Saquon Barkley. But in all seriousness, if this uh, New York team doesn't fix this offensive line, Saquon ain't going to do much to anybody. Man, the reality is we have talent on that side of the ball. We have assignments, and these guys just have to go out and execute. There's nobody on that side of the ball offensively for the Giants that can really take over this game simply because they don't have the offensive line to go against ours defensively. Just line. lane integrity. Just stay in your lane, make him run up into those, those uh, closed gaps, and everything will be okay. Along those same lines, the Cowboys, or excuse me, the Giants having no Daniel Jones. It is Mike Lennon that will start at quarterback for New York, and they have no Kadarius Toney, who had 189 receiving yards against the Cowboys back in week five. So that's why I ask you guys, where do you see the production coming from from this Cowboys passing game? From this Cowboys, I think it's all three of them. I think it's either, it is. You could pick your poison. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, well, whoever the, the case may the be. Giants oh, for the Giants yeah, offense. Where do you okay, see it coming? Okay. I don't see it coming from anywhere. I mean, <laughs> Kadarius Tony to me, was the only one that can consistently beat one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. They have Gallaudet, they have Ingram, they have Shepard, but those guys, to me, can't beat one-on-one -on -one coverage. I don't see where they're going to get this passing attack going on. We faced Glennon last time. He had 64% completion rate. He had two interceptions, mm -hmm. and he had under 200 yards passing. If we can do anything even remotely close to that again, I don't think that anybody, any one of those three right there that you see on your screen will have any effect. You know, I would see what Sterling would do. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm not coaching staff for the Giants, I would see what Sterling Shepard can do. And you know what? 
Saquon Barkley would be everywhere, in the slot, out wide, in the backfield. He would touch that ball 85,000 times <laughs> if it was me. It's just me now. If, they're, if, if Nate Newton's yeah. the offensive coordinator, coordinator yeah. 26 he is He would be tired after the game. Oh, yeah, he'll be in an ice <laughs> bath, no doubt about it. I want to go more in on Mike Glennon here because it is a different quarterback. Of course, the Cowboys did see them back in week five with Glennon at quarterback because of Daniel Jones being knocked out and put into concussion protocol. But what does he bring to the table as a veteran backup that could challenge this Cowboys defense if they're not careful. Well, he's been around the league for a long time. He's a journeyman out there, so he's seen a lot of defenses out there. So to me, it's gonna it might be kind of hard to disguise your defenses to get you know kind of get under his skin that way. But to me, I just I just don't believe in this guy and what he brings to the table. And I think this Cowboys defense is gonna be able to pick him apart. Yeah, Glennon has a you know he has a key to the Old Testament. You know he, yeah. he can see everything in the past. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, even though you, he can, you can identify things, even though you can see things that are gonna approach, you still can't stop it. And again, as I mentioned before, he doesn't have the protection up front to have any effect of uh, offensively against this defense if I'm Glennon I'm just getting the ball out my hand quick that's what I'm gonna do man I'm gonna get that I ain't gonna even mention Saquon Barkley again. <laughs> and then they get the ball out your hands man you already know what it is with yeah. Saquon Barkley <laughs> nowhere yes, sir. wants the Giants to get the ball too and hopefully the Cowboys can suppress that on the defensive side of things let's go back out to MetLife Stadium and join the sidelines again where Nick Eatman is now one-on-one -on -one with Stephen Jones thank you Kyle I'm here with Stephen Jones, Cowboys Chief Operating Officer, and we missed you last week. Glad to have you here this week, and just tell us what your excitement level is. Cowboys get a chance to play the Giants, maybe get three straight road wins. Well, I, we're not going to assume three th uh, straight road wins till we go out and get it done. Yeah. But of course, anytime you play the NFC East uh, on the road, it's going to be a big challenge. And certainly the Giants, I know they've got their challenges with the uh, with COVID, and they have missing some players and then some injuries as well. Uh, certainly, we've got a, a couple of them as well, but uh, no, this is a big opportunity for us to go out and uh, and hopefully play well, get our offense rolling a little bit, uh, see that defense hopefully continue to improve as they start to play together, and uh, hopefully get us a big win in the East. If we if we could, obviously, it'd go a long ways toward getting us, uh, you know, to to where we could win this East. But uh, big 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 game today. Certainly, don't overlook anybody, especially in these divisions. You, you talked about the, the COVID uh, issues. You had two guys, Osa Odigizua and also Tristan Hill in the in the middle there. Are you worried at all about your depth there? Or are you, you you did bring up Hamilton. You feel like you, you're you going to be okay to replace those two? Well, as you know, all year we've dealt with needing depth uh, in the defensive line. And certainly uh, unfortunate not having Tristan Osa. But at the same time, we got Bo Hanna, Bo Hanna who's played all year. And certainly Hamilton we brought up on the COVID replacement and he's played really good football for us all year as well. So we should uh, uh, should be able to do that nicely. And then, of course, the great thing is to uh, have Randy and D-Law yeah. yeah. and uh, Micah and DA and all that crew coming strong, Basham. Uh, you know, certainly they did a great job last year, really uh, getting pressure on the quarterback. and. We see what happens when that happens is yeah. uh, the ball, the ball, the ball. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got to continue with that. That'll be a big part of uh, our stretch run here if we can play great, great defense. And then, as I said earlier, get this offense, uh, you know, get some continuity going over on that side, execute, and uh, uh, hopefully get this uh, team having some momentum on the stretch run. Well, you talked about continuity. We'll go to the offensive side, offensive line. That's always a big uh, place where you want continuity. Connor Williams will be playing at left guard uh, in this game. Can you go into what, what maybe the, the decision was there and then what do you like about him there playing at left guard? Well, Connor's actually played well all year at left guard. The issue, of course, were, were the penalties. Right. And uh, certainly uh, he understands uh, understands that. We all know offensive holding can be a, uh, you know, can be a drive killer. And certainly, uh, hopefully he's got his hands around that. and. You know, Connor McGovern did a lot of good things for us in that stretch. And uh, the bigger thing he does, which he does well, is play that fullback yeah. role uh, on the offensive side. And with us trying to get our run game going, uh, you know, really get it moving today, uh, he can help us tremendously there. But uh, he's a damn good football player, and it'll be good to uh, see how this uh, group plays together today. You expect a few snaps out of Tony Pollard today? Absolutely. I think he's going to uh, uh, play, and uh, we'll see how it goes with him. Uh, we'll manage him and uh, see how it's going, but he's going to play such a big part of this offense down the stretch. It'll be nice to have him out there uh, working with the guys today. I certainly missed him last week. Familiar face, maybe a different number, but familiar face over there on the other side of the ball with Jalen Smith. Would you 
good comments on him. Well, Jalen's a great guy. I mean, a great uh, individual, uh, great football player. Uh, it's just unfortunate, uh, you know, we cut his career a little short with us, but uh, I know he'll go out there and play well for the Giants and have nothing but the be best of uh, luck to him and nothing but great thoughts about Jalen Smith. All right, that's Stephen Jones, Cowboys Chief Operating Officer. We appreciate it. Stay warm. Thank we'll you. See you too. All right, see you. Kyle, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Nick. And Steven doing the transitioning for us because we wanted to talk about Jalen Smith, former Cowboy, drafted by the Cowboys a couple years ago, released earlier in the year, had a short stint with the Green Bay Packers, and he was signed to the practice squad this week. Well, guess what? He's elevated. He's on the sideline. Do you expect to see Jalen Smith? You played with him oh, for yeah. a little bit. I expect to see a little bit. I mean, I, I'm sure they'll have him out there in some type of sub package, maybe on a long third down, let him rush the quarterback a little bit. But I expect to see a little bit of something from Jalen Smith today. Hopefully it's not too crazy against these Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun to see him go against his old team, um, obviously. And hopefully we don't see too much swiping. I hope he does have one good play so he can live that up. But aside from that, I hope that we go ahead and drag him. No, I don't ride like that. <laughs> I don't ride like that. Jalen, glad you're there, son. Have a good day. That's it. That's, uh, that's have a good day. Thank yeah. you, Nate Newton. All right, let's talk about the offense. Barry, you were so excited oh. to talk about those Cowboys receivers a little bit ago. So now I ask you, how much pressure is on the big three to help this offense get back on track against the New York Giants, and who are you looking to maybe take that next step this week? I think there's a lot of pressure on these three receivers. I mean, we know that chemistry, that timing between Dak and these guys hasn't been there as of late, but to me, I expect a big game out of uh, Michael Gallup out there. He's the king of the 50-50 ball. Hopefully, like I said, that chemistry, that timing between him and Dak can get back going, and I expect him to ball out tonight, especially against a depleted New York Giants secondary. We need, I'm going to repeat, we need Coop to show up tonight. We need to find a way to protect up front, make Dak comfortable so he can feel confident delivering the ball to our guy because he only has two games this year over 100 yards. Let me run that back. He has two games over this, this year over 70 yards. Oh. So we have to find a way to force feed this guy the ball because he is our, our number one receiver. You know, the quickest way to your quarterback's heart is to get open, and we need a CeeDee Lamb to get open. He's the best slot receiver, in my opinion, in the game. So all he got to just do his thing, and, you know, Dak will start to flow through CeeDee Lamb. More on CeeDee Lamb. I mean, you said that Coop's the number one receiver. CeeDee Lamb leads the way right now. 64 receptions, 890 yards, six touchdowns. He's tied with Cooper in that last category, but he's 110 yards. He's one big game away from having 1,000 yards on the year. So he's actually been the most consistent receiving threat for Dak Prescott throughout the season. So keep that in mind if 88 starts getting open a little bit against this depleted and really COVID ridden Giants secondary. Four guys testing positive for the Giants secondary coming up this morning. So with all this being said, the Cowboys have the strength back. They have all these guys returning. A couple guys out because of COVID in their own right. Osa Digizua and Tristan Hill. But you throw the record out the window every time you face a divisional opponent. So I ask you guys who have been in these rivalries previously, how much does this matter to a team like the Cowboys when there is such a big talent gap? Oh, yeah. You've got to focus on your task and what you have to accomplish, play in and play out. We know this is a division rivalry. They know your strengths. They know your weaknesses. They know you like the back of your hand. So you got to come out here, give 110% because we know this team knows us. But talent, I think, will overmatch this New York uh, Giants team. I've been on the Dallas side of this. I've been on the Giants side of this. <laughs> uh, this game is everything, okay? Records go out the window. Guys have to show up and take care of ball because all everything else that goes around the game is going to be is going to be huge. Coach Johnson once told me, technique, playing smart, playing hard all the way through game. Yeah, just win it by one point because you're the better team. Just yeah, execute. So, Nate, how do the Cowboys win it by one point with your key to the game? Hey, just go out there and just perform hard and do what you got to do and have consistency on the offensive line. You'll definitely get this by one point. Isaiah? Yeah, I think consistency is everything, especially offensively. Yeah, let, get the, uh, let the young line eat. I mean, let uh, Parsons go out there, whether it's on the edge, up the middle. Let that go out, guy go out there and eat and earn that defensive player of the year. He's been doing it so far, and the yeah. Cowboys look to try and get back on track on the offensive side of the ball, keep the momentum rolling on the defensive side. But that's it for us here on Cowboys pregame live. The Cowboys and the Giants. Dallas looking for their ninth win in ten tries against the foes from up in New York. It's a noon kickoff on Fox. Adam Amin and Mark Schlereth on the call. But that's it for us. Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the game on DallasCowboys.com.